how do we transition now? God. Uh, well, you all, I think you've all read about what happened in, um, in Buffalo over the weekend. Um, last I read, 10 people were killed. A number of people were still in the hospital. Um, a man walked into a, a, uh, a grocery store, basically, and went on a shooting spree and killed a bunch of people. Um, like many of the people who've done this before, uh, El Paso, if you remember, I think that was a Walmart. Um, not, not a Walmart, a Home Depot, I think. Um, in, um, in a synagogue in uh, Pennsylvania, um, it, where a man went in and killed a bunch of uh, uh, Jews at the synagogue. Uh, they all published manifestos. And like a church Christ in New Zealand, uh, where I think the numbers were far bigger in terms of the number of death than anything in the, the United States has seen, um, again, uh, a manifesto was published. And all manifestos are basically inspired by the same basic idea. Remember, the world at the end of the day is shaped by ideas. And while for a very long time we believed that the terrorist threat that most, uh, that, that most of us should fear, that most of us should be concerned about, was the terrorist threat coming from the ideas of jihadism, from the idea of Islamism, uh, that is still probably true. Uh, the, 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 the Islamist terrorists are still uh, looking out there and could strike any time. Uh, the fact is that the current threat of, uh, of uh, dying from a terrorist attack is much more likely to come right now from a new right, um, a wacky right, if I call the, the left wacky left, this is the wacky right, the, uh, the white supremacist right, the replacement theory right. And I've talked before about replacement theory. I think I did a whole episode about uh, Tucker Carlson directly referring to the replacement theory, supporting the replacement theory, expressing his support for it, uh, and popularizing it, using the platform he has on Fox News to legitimize his theory and popularize it. Uh, the replacement theory was first coined as, as, a, as, a, as, as replacement by a French author. Uh, I think it was in 2011. Uh, and he was writing about the idea that f uh, Europeans, particularly France, Europeans were being replaced by people of um, dark skin, either uh, Africans, black Africans, or uh, Muslims. And that France was, the white people in France were being replaced by people of different ethnic, different genetic origin, different skin color. And as a consequence, uh, French culture was going to be in decline uh, and everything, Western civilization was lost. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the world, the world was, was changing dramatically. Um, since then, Many people on the right, uh, here in the United States and internationally, have picked up on this idea. In the United States, uh, the idea is uh, the replacement is primarily happening by people from uh, Latin America, so uh, Mexicans, Hispanics, and so on, but also by, uh, by blacks. And, and, and of course, uh, let me just note that many of these theories, many of these theories are animated by the belief that behind this great replacement theory are Jews. Uh, like every good conspiracy theory, you need the devil. And like any good conspiracy theory, the devil uh, preferably is a Jew. That is why, if you remember back to the synagogue attack in, in, um, in Pennsylvania, uh, he attacked the synagogue. He attacked the Jews, not because they were the ones doing the replacement but because of the idea that they were the ones who were making the replacement possible. That it was all about the Jews financially supporting, financially conspiring, or politically conspiring, to replace Christian whites 
with Hispanics who they, I guess, could control easier in their attempts to take over the world. So I always get upset about this idea that Jews are going to take over the world, and yet nobody told me about it. Maybe I need to get more involved in, in, in the Jewish thing to, to be in on, on, the, on, the, on the conspiracy. Or maybe I am in on, it, in on it, but I'm just not telling you guys. That's also a possibility. I guess you have to consider. I mean, it, it really is sickening. But the idea is basically a racist idea that what defines America, what defines Europe, are not the ideas that made America and Europe great, not the founding principles of the founding fathers, not the Enlightenment ideas, the ideas of liberalism, the ideas of freedom, not the great art that helped define Western culture and Western civilization, not the science, not the scientific revolution, but primarily not the Enlightenment ideas. No, what defines Europe, what defines America, is the color of our skin. An idea, by the way, shared today by the left. So in this, the left, the wacky left and the wacky right share an ideology. They all believe in the primacy of skin color. They all believe in the primacy of the gene. They all believe in the primacy of your genetic makeup. And on the right, on the wacky right, there is this notion that what makes America, what makes Europe is whiteness, and therefore having people come in of different color skin is a death wand on the culture. It's a death wand. Because they cannot be assimilated, because as one of our commentators uh, in the chat does, as they always do. Oh, no, these people have low IQs. I bet you I can take a random Nigerian immigrant, dark, 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 dark skin, and I, I'm willing to bet a lot of money that he, any random Nigerian has a higher IQ than OARC Promo has. No, sorry, I'm picking on OARC Promo. Sorry, it wasn't OARC promo, delete that, it was uh, John Davis. Then that They have a higher IQ than John Davis. So let's not assimilate people. Let's not embrace our own culture, our own ideas, our own values. Let's not teach people what those are so that they can be assimilated and become part of what is America or what is Europe. Let's instead just keep our skin color because that's all that matters. That's all that matters. I mean, this is some of the most horrific, racist nonsense, irrationality. And of course, they're all determinists. So they all think you are determined by your gene or you are determined by your culture, but you certainly are determined. They reject free will. They reject the idea that you can shape your own character, that you can make your own choices, that you can Pursue your own values. Right? People of different colored skin just are hopeless. People of different colored skin just have no potential of becoming part of this great nation. They have no potential of adopting the ideas of the founders. Take a Patrick Henry. 
No, I'm sorry, not Patrick Kenny. Drop that. Right? So, the idea here is that what defines the culture is skin color. What defines a culture is the most lowest form of collectivism, the, the, the most tribal notion. that one can imagine. I will get to all the questions, I promise. So, what do you do about this? What do you do about this? John Davis says, nobody believes that. It's probably 50-50 between genes and culture. But that's my point. It's not 50-50. It's 25-25-50, maybe. Maybe even less than that. And maybe it's 10-10-80. Because what you, John, like most people, ignore is free will. What you ignore completely is the fact that we shape our own character, that we choose our own values, that we actually have free will. All you have is determined robots out there being determined by their culture. They happen to be born in... Europe, so they have a good culture, they're good people. They are born in Africa, bad culture, bad people. Bad genes, bad people. Good genes, good people. Complete crap, complete nonsense. Now, this idea that what defines civilization is skin color, what defines civilization is DNA, what defines civilization is an unimportant attribute of your genes. I mean, this attitude would be one thing if it was just on the fringe. It was just on the wacky left and the wacky right. But we've seen how this attitude from the wacky left is infiltrated and become somewhat mainstream within the left, although there is some resistance to it. And now we're seeing how these wacky ideas on the right about race are becoming mainstreamed by people like Tucker Carlson. And mainstreamed by many on the, I'd say, nationalist right, who don't have a view of America as a great nation because it's based on great ideas. Don't have a view of America as a great nation because of its great founders and the great documents they left us and the great philosophy they embedded into the culture. But they have a view that America is a great country because we're white and Christian. We're part of a white and Christian people. And that's what makes us great. So uh, we are moving towards, as I've always said, a unity of left and right, where left and right agree that skin color is everything, that genes are everything, that ethnic origin is everything, that, and that we must, for the right, preserve America as a white nation. And in the left, suppress the white people because they're all guilty. So, um, 
it's, it's amazing to me that we have gone from uh, the document that says that all men are created equal, that we have inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, to a world where pff, rights, rights don't matter. <laughs> rights have nothing to do with it. And all men are created equal? You've got to be kidding me. Nobody's equal. Not in rights, not in polit not in uh, before the law, not in any sense. God forbid immigrants have rights. God forbid people who cross the border have any rights. God forbid Americans who invite people into the country have rights. Americans have no rights if they can't invite whoever they want to come and work for them. They can't invite whoever they want to sell their house to. They can't invite anybody else, anyone they want to, to stay at their hotel. No. America has moved far, far away from the idea of individual rights, far, far away from the idea of equality of rights, equality before the law. And we've now embraced tribalism and the ideas of not of equality before the law, not of equality of rights, not of equality of liberties, but some kind of equality of outcome that cannot be achieved or some kind of genetically determined hierarchy which cannot be questioned, depending on whether you're on your left or on the right. But again, it all boils down to the same, same hopeless determinism that is a feature of both right and left. To challenge this, to challenge this, we need to return to the founding principles of this country. To challenge this, we need to embrace the idea of individual rights, individual rights, not determined by the color of your skin. Not granting you the permission to go kill 10 people because they happen to be black. Not giving you the permission to build a wall to prevent peaceful people from coming in because you don't like their color skin, culture, language. All men are created equal didn't say that it's only about one side of the fence or the other side of the fence. We either have rights or we don't have rights as human beings. Either rights are a universal concept or they're not. They're only for white people. I guess I shouldn't define myself with white, although these days I guess the left defines me as white. I'm not sure the right does. I'm not sure the right has ever accepted people born of Jewish descent as being from the right. The only way to fight is to fight the battle of ideas. The only way to fight the battle of ideas is to have principles. And to have principles, you need to be consistent. You need to have them well-defined. And you need to be willing to fight for those principles, to stand up for those principles, to argue for those principles. And um, God, it's truly stunning how few people I've seen from the right, or let's say the non-left, come out against replacement theory argue against it. There is no massive conspiracy by Jews to replace white people with dark-skinned people. But the fact is that there are more dark-skinned people or Asian and dark-skinned people in the world than there are white people. But good culture is not determined by genes. It's determined by the people who have the good ideas and have a good culture, their willingness to fight for it, their willingness to stand up for it, their willingness to s insist that people, that people accept that culture. 
It means rejecting multiculturalism in all its forms, rejecting the idea that cultures are equal, and fighting for what is good, fighting for what is right, fighting for what is just. But it's shocking to me that here we are in the 21st century, and we're still dealing with just blatant, ugly racism. We should be so far beyond that. We should be so far better than that. But we're not. We're not. And uh, we're not on both sides of the political spectrum. The world, the world of sanity, the world of sanity is shrinking dramatically, shrinking dramatically. Uh, the number of people who are actually individualists, who argue for individualism, argue from the perspective of individualism, is shrinking dramatically in both left and on right. The number of people arguing for not the supremacy of the white race, not the supremacy of the Christian religion, but the supremacy of Western civilization as a civilization, a civilization arising out of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And without that fight, without fighting for rights, without fighting for civilization, without insisting on it, without standing one's ground on it, we are indeed lost. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's very depressing to have to fight this kind of battle. It's very depressing to have to talk about replacement theory, which, which should be, for anybody half civilized, just barbarism. Just barbarism. We, in the Iran Book Show, advocate for treating people as individuals, not as faceless, not, I wouldn't say colorless, because color is all that matters, not as, as, as faceless, interchangeable cogs in a machine, cogs in a collective. Placement theory relies on tribalism, it relies on collectivism, it relies on viewing people not as individuals. Its appeal is to the tribalist, its appeal is to the collectivist. And the only way to fight that is to reject collectivism, reject tribalism, and embrace individualism, treating people as individuals. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening, you get value from watching, Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.